and welcome back to the ONTV Fantasy Football Podcast. Today we have a new guest, Becky Andrus, and Joe Johnson is back from his vacation. Happy Finally. Halloween, everybody. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not in the spirit as you two are, <laughs> but uh, um, we had some good matchups this week. Uh, there were some really nail-biting Monday night games, um, two of which are in this room right now. Um, but every time we get a new guest on, we like to introduce our new guests. Uh, like I said, Becky is the owner of the Halftime Honeybees. Becky, just tell us a little bit about your uh, fantasy football experience. Where do you lie on this spectrum? How long have you been playing fantasy football? Or Well, I have two teams. Mm-hmm. I have a team with my family, which this is my fourth season. Okay. So I know a little bit, and this is my you know our first season with ON TV. Yeah. So... My experience is I'm still learning, mm-hmm. still trying to figure things out. Yeah, but you like it enough to keep playing. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> well, you started out strong, right? I did. And now you're stumbling yeah, a little bit. So They're, Honeybees are struggling. <laughs> yeah, they are. But, I mean, overall, everybody's – like, the standings are still really close. We've had yeah. uh, changes in the standings almost every week, I think, um, and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier, in my opinion. Um so if we get right into the very first matchup, the highest scoring team this week, who still hasn't changed his name from Malik's last place team, is Malik's last place team, who put up 170, basically 173 points mm. um, against my brother, who had 114. And basically everybody from Malik's team had a good game for the most part. Almost, yeah. There were bigger expectations for Pacheco, uh, there was supposed to be bad weather during this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mahomes wasn't feeling well, so everyone predicted a run, 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 yeah. and Pacheco ended up with 6.7. Yeah. Um, but the rest of his team uh, kept him aloft. Yeah, and the, the whole Chiefs team struggled in that game. So, um, But he got good points from Jamar Chase, who put up a clean 10 receptions, 100 yards, and one touchdown. Mm. Uh, Josh Allen kind of doing his thing. C.D. Lamb had a huge game um, this week, and Travis Etienne has been one of the best running backs in the league this season. Yeah, one of the biggest uh, pleasant surprises from the draft. Um, But let's talk about Lamb, 158 receiving yards, 12 receptions, two touchdowns. That is a fantasy performance that we all dream of, 41 Mm. points. Yeah, Uh, definitely hard to beat that. And then on the other side, my brother... Uh, Matthew Stafford struggled mightily in this game, even before he got injured, and then he got injured on top of it. Uh, Stephon Diggs had a pedestrian Stephon Diggs game, nine receptions for 70 yards. Chris Olave continues to struggle in that Saints offense, even though they put up a bunch of points this week. Uh, Ken Walker was banged up going into this game, so that was tough. Brees Hall has been really consistent lately, and yeah. we finally got to see Jalen Waddle have a good game with seven catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. I think he's had a couple of games in a row where he's performed yeah. really well. So when Miami has all their weapons uh, firing on all cylinders, they're scary. Yeah. The uh, the scariest thing about all of this, though, is uh, Malik had DeAndre Hopkins on his bench. Oh, you know what's weird? In the other league that we're in, uh, Hopkins was on the bench, too. People... Mm-hmm had given up on Hopkins. They well, the, bring in this rookie quarterback, yeah. and Hopkins gets three touchdowns. I was going to say, I think a lot of people were nervous about the rookie quarterback because Will Levis was a potential top five quarterback in the NFL draft this season and fell mightily into the second round, and people just didn't know how he was going to look. There was also talks about them uh, doing a pl- platoon swap at quarterback of doing Malik Willis in some drives, uh, Will Levis in others, and DeAndre Hopkins had a huge game. Now it was kind of lucky. It was four catches on three <laughs> touchdowns and 128 yards. But uh, yeah, I'll if he would have played him, whew, he would have been knocking on the 200 door. Yeah. Um, and then luckily for my brother, I, I hate to say luckily, but um, his bench wouldn't have really made a difference in this matchup. Yeah, McLaurin, uh, 17.3, he had a, a receiving touchdown. Um, but yeah, not not much else going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next highest scoring matchup or score, was Sammy's the Green Buckeye, and Tracy now has lost two in a row. Oh, how quickly (laughs) they get knocked off their perch. Yeah. um, 
again, Sammy being carried by the Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown stack. Uh, A.J. Brown has been huge for, I think it's six straight weeks now. Mm. He's set an he's, NFL yeah, he's record. Breaking records for yardage. Yeah. yeah um, anytime you're in the same conversation with Calvin Johnson is a, is a big deal. So mm. 33 points from him, 27 from Hertz. Um, that's just, that's just hard to overcome yet again. And each of his uh, other players got over 15 points, which is usually um, a good number when you're looking for consistency. Yeah. Looking over at uh, Tracy's team, the the glaring thing that jumps out at me was Adam's performance against the Lions on Monday night. Mm-hmm. They really held him in check. The Lions D played really well. Yep. Two point one points from Adams, who was seen smashing his helmet on the sideline. Yeah. Uh I don't know if this is praise of the Lions or criticism of uh the uh Raiders but uh what a disappointing outing from Adams for uh Tracy's team yeah I think it's a little bit of both um Adams dropped a couple easy ones but he also you know he got open a couple times and Garoppolo couldn't hit him so it was just inconsistency all across the board I was at that game and uh at one point I saw Adams uh, streaking down the sideline, no one around him, wide open, would have been an easy touchdown, and the ball sailed 10 feet over his head. Yeah, Garoppolo, I don't know, I, I, he might have been pressured, but still, uh, he, Adams didn't have a chance at it, and it would have been an easy touchdown, and I could hear fantasy owners throughout the stadium moaning yeah. as they saw that missed opportunity. Yeah, the other difficult thing, too, was uh, – Detroit moved the ball all night last night, and they just could not get in the end zone. Yeah. Uh, so Jared Goff had a pretty bad fantasy game. He had a good NFL game. Yeah. Um, 272, one touchdown, and one pick six. That was pretty bad. Oh, that was brutal. I don't know what he was doing on that yeah. pass. But everything else was pretty solid. Um, yet again, luckily for Tracy, even if she played Sam Laporta and uh, the Dallas defense, wouldn't have been enough. Uh, to get her over the hump to be able to beat Sammy. So she falls to 6-2. and two. Sammy goes up to 5-3. and three. No buys this week, so she can't blame buys. So uh, she had a, a roster at full strength. So yeah. got to do some tweaking. Yep. Um, the next matchup, another really good one. The Dak Knight Rises against Ian's Ingenious team. Came down to Monday night and Sunday night, really. Um, as Ian had Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler both have really good games uh, on Sunday night to close the gap and put him right in the spot where Amon Ross St. Brown just needed to be Amon Ross St. Brown and he would have won the game. Mm. Uh, The crazy stat line is Amon Ross St. Brown had six catches for 108 yards, and I believe that was basically all in the first half. Yeah. And so going into the second half, he only needed one point from St. Brown to beat Marie and he didn't get it. Mm. And she I've sat in the there. I know what that feels like. She literally went to bed not knowing that she won. Yeah, and it's hard to, you know, when it's that close and you're in the second half, it's hard to sit there and watch it. So, yeah, I can understand walking away from the TV in frustration and then looking at the scores the next morning and going, what? Mm-hmm. I won? Yeah. Uh, she was pretty elated for that. Um She got a big day from Dak Prescott this week, finally having a really good game. Four touchdown passes, 304 yards, just one pick. Uh, Tyler Lockett, eight catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. Cortland Sutton didn't have a good game, but he keeps getting touchdowns. Uh, Alvin Kamara has been on fire ever since he's come back. Hot, he has been, yeah. He had two touchdowns. Derrick Henry had 100 yards um, on the ground with a couple catches. And she did all this without Travis Kelsey doing anything. The... uh, Taylor Swift not being in the building is starting to become a real stat. Did you see his – have you seen his numbers with and without uh, Swift at the games? No. They are night and day. In, I think, hmm. the, what, three games that she's been there, he's averaging 98 yards or something a game, and the games that she hasn't been there, it's like 50 yards. Well, I saw them both at the Lions game. They were sitting in our section – uh, there's a guy with a Kelsey jersey, oh, and there's a cute blonde next to him. I assumed it was Taylor and Kelsey at the Lions game. Yeah, I'm but, sure they know. really wanted to st- spend their night at a <laughs> Lions Raiders Monday night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, funny enough, which 
he wouldn't have done, but if uh, Ian had played Sam Howell in his quarterback spot, mm. he would have won the matchup. Um, but, I mean, yeah, he, is, I don't know who would have done that. Is Howell a hot pickup right now? I know we'll talk about waivers in a little bit, but mm. four TD passes against Philadelphia. Yeah. 397 passing yards, 30.98 points. Uh, I don't know. He could be a bye week fill-in or... If you're, you know, dealing with injuries, we we lost uh, Cousins this weekend, and Stafford hurt his thumb, mm-hmm. so people might be scrambling for a, a, a quarterback fill, and uh, Howell could be that candidate. Yeah, he's a he's a good volume passer. Uh, he's had some rough games, but he's had some really good games at the same time, so he might give you a boost for a week or two. Mm. Yeah, um, a lot of points on the bench. The next matchup is my matchup. Um, we'll gloss over it because I, I beat Drake pretty pretty handily. <laughs> um, he didn't he didn't get too much done. He's got a lot of players injured. Uh, he lost Kendrick Bourne even in this game. Wow. Um, Josh Jacobs kind of was able to do more than I even thought he would against the Lions. Um, and then for me, it was pretty disappointing because it was basically Joe Burrow coming back to life, which was great, and Christian McCaffrey doing you know what Christian McCaffrey does. Uh, the biggest problem, though, is Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are now without Stafford, and we don't know how long that's going to be. Yeah. And those are my two, two of my top wide receivers, and I do have wide receiver depth. But without Stafford, I don't trust Brett Rippon. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I don't think Stafford gets the credit he deserves, and he's made, you know, the last couple seasons, he's made – Cup look really, really great, like Hall of Fame material, and now look what he's done for Nakua, putting him on the map. Now let's see going forward how much of that was Stafford and how much of that is the talent of the receivers. I give Stafford a lot more credit than most people do, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think it's hard to say because, like, Cooper Cup is obviously super talented. Oh, yeah. Um, Puka Nakua, I think, is also going to be there. Um, and it's going to be hard to compare because Brett Rippon is going to be awful for them. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be someone like it's like a Devonte Adams situation. Like you can't necessarily blame Devonte Adams in that scenario, uh, just because Jimmy Garoppolo can't get him the ball. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, everybody else for me did pretty solid. Mark Andrews got a touchdown. Adam Thielen had a down game, but he did good enough. Um, yeah, it's funny that a down game for Thielen is eight catches for 72 yards yeah. he's that's how hot he's been mm-hmm. yeah um i did pick up kyler murray uh he's maybe even gonna play this week which would be wild um but now with joe burrow being healthy that was kind of my fill-in if joe burrow didn't come back um mm. and look decent yeah um and then i do have hn still uh coming off the ir hopefully sooner rather than later because I'm actually slightly worried about my team with Cup and Nakua right now. Well, I read recently that uh, HN is, uh, you know, he has that four-week IR layoff, and they're saying he's he's doing really well, and he should be back on the field that fifth week. Yeah. So we'll see. I think the only thing that stinks is they have their bye week right after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have the four weeks, and the next week is their bye week. Oh, so he so won't come back till, till after the that. following. Week. All right, so which, he, he should be at full strength. Yeah, which realistically is nice. Gives him an extra week to get healthy. Yeah, and finally the matchup that we're all here mm-hmm. for the game of the week. W e a k, but also <laughs> the game of the week. <laughs> uh, the Hollywood blockbusters beat the halftime honeybees. I hate to bring you on, Becky, when you lose by such a close matchup, um, and I hate to say that I have a lot of experience losing in close matchups, um, but I do. Um, this was the weirdest, not only was it the closest matchup of the week, it was the weirdest matchup of the week because you got production from Tua and Tyreek Hill. And anytime that that happens, I am terrified to go up against your team because that's like what makes your team go. Um, and then meanwhile, Joe's team, they did exactly the opposite of what I would have expected them to do. Like Patrick Mahomes had five points. Jacoby Myers, who had been super consistent all season, had Barely three Didn't points. Three, yeah. And uh, breakouts for Jameer Gibbs last night on Monday night got it done, which to me is even wild that he did that well. Um, I knew he had the talent, but for him to put up 152 rushing yards, a touchdown, and five catches uh, was pretty incredible. And then yeah. Jordan Addison continuing his uh, good streak. Yeah, I've gotten nice production from him. I'm a little concerned about him without Cousins, but we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, heading into that Monday night game, trailing Becky, the honeybees, mm-hmm. and going, okay, <laughs> I got I got Gibbs and Myers going on Monday mm-hmm. night, and I needed a ton of points. I was ready to accept defeat. And then that first Lions drive, they fed Gibbs, 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 Gibbs. And like after the first drive, he had like 10 points right. or something. And I'm like, well, this is uh, encouraging. Yeah. yeah. And what a game Gibbs had. Now, if if it wasn't for Myers, who did not have a single catch until very late in the game, he got, what did he have, one catch for 19 yeah. yards. I would have lost this matchup mm-hmm. if Myers didn't get me that late catch in the game. And I checked my scores as I was sitting in the in Ford Field and couldn't believe that I had passed you, in it, but it was <laughs> less than a point. Yeah. yeah. When when you left for the game on Monday, you weren't very you weren't very optimistic no. about your team. No, no. And so uh, I was pretty hopeful that the honeybees would bring home a W. But... <laughs> now, Becky, I, I I noticed this is kind of your team in a nutshell, which is a good and a bad thing. You have a lot of depth on your team. So like what what are your decision make like Tony Pollard, Joe has Tony Pollard in our other league. And I just and, kicked him to the curb. And he's been a frustrating player because a lot of people expected him to be really good. Uh how do you feel about like Tony Pollard or maybe uh not playing Mike Evans or Joe Mixon who went off on your bench that would have gotten the job done? It seems like every week is different mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. You know what one week Pollard will do great. Next week he doesn't do great. Mm-hmm. So Basically, my strategy when I place my team is I see who's going to score the most points. Okay. Right? Yeah. That, that's the my projection. strategy. The projection yeah. of the mm-hmm. points. Okay. Because if I would have played Mixon instead of Pollard, I would have won. Right. Oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I sat so, I sat Mixon in, in one of my other leagues because he's been another frustrating running back. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of what happens with the running back position more often than not is it's just a frustrating position. Um, and then same with like Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts had been having some good games back to back here recently and then mm-hmm. comes out and has another dud. So it's just kind of unfortunate times, I guess. But even I have Lamar Jackson on my bench mm-hmm. and if you look at his points, he'll do great one yes. week, next oh, yeah. week he doesn't do well. It, if yeah. you listen so, to the podcast, we talk about <laughs> your quarterback situation almost every week because it seems like they'll flip flop back and forth right. almost every week that mm-hmm. one week. Tua will have a really good game. Next week, Lamar will have a really good game. Um, but it's hard to sit Tua when you have Tyreek. So, You know, looking at your roster, it's kind of similar to Joey's and that you have two wide receivers from the Bucks, Godwin and Evans. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joey, you have two wide receivers from the Rams. Yeah, I have never been a fan of starting two receivers from the same team. Uh What are your thoughts on that? So normally I don't like it either, but when you're on a team, and and I think these are two great examples, Tampa Bay and the Rams, besides those guys, who do they have, especially Tampa Bay, outside of Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, they don't have much other talent. And Baker Mayfield needs uh, consistency from his wide receivers, and I think that's why he kind of funnels towards Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, who are known veterans. Um, and then with Puka Nakua, the way that he's been playing this season, even with Cooper Cup coming back, we know that Matthew Stafford sticks to his guys. And I felt like as soon as Puka Nakua had been kind of confirmed as one of Stafford's new favorite targets, I just figured he's going to throw it to only those two guys. And yeah. it's been pretty much that uh, that entire way. But I, I agree. Normally, in most scenarios, I try to shy away from that. And I think there's just a couple uh, scenarios that um, – you can kind of get away from that. Like, look at Las Vegas, Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers. Mm-hmm. And Jacoby Myers is normally not a guy that you would think of going into the season that would be that way. But Jimmy Garoppolo has only targeted Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers consistently yeah. every game. So if you had both of them, you could play them both. Yeah. So it's kind of a rare occurrence, but uh, I think sometimes it's okay to go with. Yeah. Especially in, in a team, too, like the Rams or uh, the Bucks that don't have a great running game. They're not great teams, so they're probably going to be behind in games, which makes them have to throw it more often. Um, I think you have to look deeper into it at that point if you're going to play two wide receivers. So. Yeah. 
Now that's my second win in a row. I'm on a hot streak. Yep. Four and four, sixth place. Mm-hmm. Becky, uh, you're in eighth. You're on the bubble no. at three and five. I'm on a yeah. two two game losing streak here. Do you? What are your thoughts? Do you make some moves? Do you stick with your studs? What are you know, What are you thinking here at this? When stage? I'm looking at next week's game, I play Drake. Mm-hmm. He has some Free chal- win. <laughs> he has some challenges this week. Yeah. He has a wide receiver who's out. Mm-hmm. And then there's also Dobbs. What's going on with Dobbs? He got it's- traded today, actually, which oh, wow. may be breaking news. Uh, Joshua Dobbs is now the Minnesota Vikings quarterback. You're kidding oh. me. Yeah. Wow. So he might be in a better situation, uh, which is crazy to think about. Um, so they haven't updated uh, that That's projection. That's why, because he just got traded. Wow. Um, and since Cousins is out, he'll be playing. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he should immediately go to the starting role, I would think. Um, but he, yeah, he has right. Kendrick Bourne's going to be injured and stuff like that, so he he definitely has some lineup decisions to make. Looking and, uh, at your roster, Becky, I mean, you got some stars, you got a lot of talent on mm-hmm. your roster. You just got to find the right, right combo. combination. It, yeah, like right. one difference or one player would have made the difference between winning and losing against me. This Sometimes week, so. you just got to get a little bit lucky. Yeah. Um, moving on to the waiver wire real quick. Um, we mentioned quarterback is kind of an issue right now. A lot of quarterbacks being injured. Again, the nice thing about being in a 10 team league, tons of quarterbacks available. Russell Wilson's on by, but if you want to look towards the future, maybe he would be in a good option. Uh, Baker Mayfield, like I just said, throws it quite often. Desmond Ritter, I would stay away from. I don't trust him. Uh, Derek Carr, he struggled a little bit, but especially this week, he's playing Chicago. He throws the ball a lot. He's had over 300 yards in the last few games. That's a good, another good option for you. Um, if you need a wide receiver by chance, uh, maybe Rashid Shahid. He's kind of a big play guy. Um, I get nervous with those kind of kind of players. KJ Osborne, Minnesota. You don't know who Josh Dobbs is going to go uh, key into. Um, so you can't say if he's going to like Addison or Osborne more. It's probably going to be a good mix of both of them, but Osborne might be a good a good option. I'm really surprised to see him on, on the waiver wire because I would have snatched him up if I didn't already have Addison and Addison's been playing well for me, but I'm, I would have thought someone would have jumped on Osborne with uh, Jefferson going down. Yeah. Uh, another one is Jahan Dotson. I don't know how to feel about Jahan Dotson. Uh, he had his first big blow up game, had over a hundred yards, eight catches and a touchdown, but he's just been so wishy washy this year and Washington, they look like they're starting to tank. They, just traded a lot of uh, guys away today, mm. mostly on the defensive side. But maybe that means their defense is bad and they're going to have to throw it more. So Jahan Dotson is an option. Um, I guess it, running back, running back's kind of tough. Like I said, there's not too many. But uh, Gus Edwards is up there towards the top. He did have a three-touchdown game uh, just last week. But that was against the Cardinals. But it looks like he's going to be the lead rusher for Baltimore, who has a good offense. So there's an option for you. Um, looking into next week's matchups, we have another tough week of buys for a lot of people. Um, so make sure to get ready. I'll look at, uh, Tracy and I's matchup real quick, because I know we do have some buys. She has Jared Goff on a buy. So she is one of those people that's going to need a quarterback. Also the 49ers are on a buy, which is big for both of us. Brandon Ayuk will be on a buy for her. I'm going to lose Christian McCaffrey, which I think is a bigger loss. (laughs) Um, but other than that, that's, I think, my only bye week fill-in. Oh, Calvin Ridley. I don't know if I would have played him this week. Um, but, yeah, Tracy missing all the Lions players plus Ayuk is, is going to be tough for her to fill in. So she's going to have to do some some adjusting this week for sure. Yeah, speaking of uh, Lions players, I'm losing uh, Gibbs, who's been on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've, I've had Pierce on my bench, so I'm just going to plug him in. To yeah. replace Gibbs. Um, other than that, I uh, I think I'm good. Yeah. I uh, have to give my San Francisco defense a rest, who haven't been playing all that well for me anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, Purdy's on a bye. He's been on my bench mo- all season. So uh, just a couple of tweaks, but uh, I'm almost full strength next week. Uh, looks like uh Malik has some uh big bye weeks. He's losing yeah. ETN, Kittle. Mm-hmm. Uh so he's hurting a little bit. Yeah. I'm um, curious to see who he's gonna plug in. Um but right now, I mean I can't go with the projection yet because he doesn't have his full roster in, but uh we'll see. 
we'll yeah. see. That it's uh, uh, like you said, I'm a little fearful of Malik's team. He's yeah. been putting up <laughs> a lot of points, so mm-hmm. um, I'm hoping that I can take advantage of his uh, bye week. Yeah, and the, and the scary thing for you is that he has Josh Allen and Jamar Chase going on Sunday night. Uh, so even if you have a little bit of a lead, you're not ever going to feel fully secure. <laughs> Yeah, necessarily. And, but Allen, man, he's been up and down. You know, he he has big games. He has terrible games where he throws multiple interceptions. So, and Cincinnati's been kind of hot lately. So, I I don't know. In in this week's picks, I I might take Cincy with the points. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Next matchup, I have ooh, battle of friends. Sammy taking on Ian. <laughs> I know they're going to be uh, fighting it out. Ian's going to be without Amon Ross St. Brown, also without Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk, so he's going to be hurting a little bit. Um, he does have Zay Flowers that he can fill in, as well as Deontay Johnson, so he should be okay filling in to, um, for some guys. And then what do we have? Sammy is without Javante Williams, and that's it, but he doesn't really play Javante Williams, so... Sammy should be at full strength, which is uh, pretty scary to think about. Yeah. Um, on to the next matchup that I have. Oh, my brother is playing Marie. So a family affair. And we have Cortland Sutton on by for Marie. Um, but she has plenty of depth. She has Amari Cooper, Gabe Davis, that she might want to fill in. Again, my brother's going to have a quarterback issue like he's seemingly had all season. Going to have to replace M- Matthew Stafford for at least this week or more. I don't I haven't read up on the latest, but oh, they're saying it's day to day, so maybe there's a chance that he could even play. Um, but I'd I'd still be a little cautious with that. He's really had lousy luck with quarterbacks, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, right mm-hmm. now he doesn't have a quarterback on his bench, does he? So No. He's only he's, been rostering one and he's been bouncing back and forth, so Yeah. So if Stafford's a, a no-go, he's got to either trade or hit the waiver wire, and there's really not much out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of already touched on it. Halftime Honeybees taking on Drake's Wasteland Wanderers. Um, Becky, do you think you're going to go with the uh, the projections as they stand? You know, I'm think- thinking about maybe maybe I should put in Mixon. Yeah. Pull out Pollard, even though Pollard is projected more points. Right. That's the so- hard part. It- Pollard, you know, you know, in a competitive game against Philly, Philly's defense is really yeah. good. But at the same time, you think it might be a back and forth game. Yeah, it, I don't envy your position yeah. of trying to figure out who to plug in and who not to play. And so, I have, I just have one questionable player, uh, London. Yeah, and I think he's going to be okay, as far as I know. Right. Um, and then, like we said, you got Drake this week. I don't mean to, you know, harp on Drake's team, but. He's struggling. He's got a lot of injuries, yeah. um, some bye weeks, fill ins. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. So as long as you put in a consistent lineup, I think you'll yeah, be. Well, I'm I'm hopeful. Just fine. Hopeful for a W. Right. Because honeybees need one. Now there's no science behind this, but uh, so Buffalo and Cincinnati's playing Sunday night football. Yep. So it's gonna be a fun <sighs> Sunday night. If you were to start mixing, like I said, this is not scientific in any way. But at least you get an idea of what the score is, and then you get to cheer on Mixon right. and hope that if you are behind, he has a good, a, a good game. So yeah. it's kind of fun when it comes down to Sunday night right. or Monday night and the game is on the line. Yeah. Sometimes I like to have all the, the later primetime games just so you have that, that comeback feeling. Exactly. A little bit. So, yeah. Again, don't overthink it, but that's that's an option. Um, I wanted to quickly look at the standings before we close because uh, we have a new number one, and it's me. I don't mean to toot my own horn, uh, but I'm sitting at number one, <laughs> six and two, um, only because I have the tiebreaker in points with Tracy. Um, I am on a five-game winning streak. I started the wow. season one and two, so it was it was looking rough for a little while, um, but I finally kind of broke through. Problem is I broke through at probably the wrong time because, like I said, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are they're not looking great at the moment, so that that makes me a little nervous. I might have to do some tweaks to my lineup. Um, but we have Tracy's team at six and two, still right there, and then we have Sammy and Marie at five and three. Uh, Ian and Joe are at four and four. Malik, uh, Becky, and Jordan all at three and five, and then there's Drake, who I believe is almost just out of it at this point at one and seven. Who was Drake's uh, win against? 
Me. Joe. That's it yeah. was ugly. Because <laughs> Joe had a couple weeks where he scored uh, hardly any points. Yeah, uh, and then Drake was starting people on bye weeks and people who were ruled out. And when I brought it up, and was like, you can't do that in this league. He, he adjusts his roster and doubles my score. Yeah. But then <laughs> since then, it's more of the same. So he, mm-hmm. he like took out his rage on me. Yeah. So, as usual, Joe angered the fantasy football guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I keep saying every week, you, the standings are super close, and all all that matters is if you make it to the playoffs. Because once you make it to the playoffs, you just have to win one game, and anything can happen. So that's my goal. You know, I was on the bubble. I'm in sixth place now. I just want to make the playoffs. So, yeah. Becky, that's your challenge. Now you're sitting on the bubble. You're you're in that bottom playoff eligible spot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you gotta gotta get some wins to stay in that top yeah. eight. Uh, even Malik's last place team's ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> and Malik's going to always have the tiebreaker over everybody because he has the most points, points. in the league, even mm. though he's sitting at seventh. So that's a big thing for me being in first place. I want Malik's team to keep climbing the standings so I don't have to face him in the first right. round of the playoffs mm. because that would be terrifying. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. But we're only at week nine. So yeah. There's lots uh, of football ahead of us. What do we have? Well, there's only five weeks of regular season fantasy play. Uh, because yeah. the playoffs start week 15. Yeah. So 15, 16, and 17 are the playoffs. But, yeah, you still have plenty of time to move up the standings. Um, nobody's truly out of it yet, even Drake. Drake, if you win all your games in a row, you could still make it out, <laughs> potentially. But uh, it's definitely definitely tough to do. So I'm looking at the points four scored. I'm just above Drake in points four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you lose every tiebreaker. So Ooh. you need to keep winning. Uh, that's that's important for your team. Um, okay, that is a uh, week. What are we eight in the books? Moving on to week nine. Everybody, make sure to uh, put your waiver wire uh, claims in and make any roster moves with the tough bye week that we have ahead of us. Becky, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>